Have you been told you need to stop doing what you love, whether it's exercise, running, or a sport? Well, here at Dynamic, we don't like that answer. In this podcast, we'll talk to leaders in the health and wellness space from Southwest Florida to get the solutions you need to get you back to doing what you love. Welcome to the Dynamic Naples Podcast. What's going on, Naples? Today, I want to talk about shoulder pain, specifically when reaching overhead lifting weights, reaching for their kitchen cabinets, sort of in a forward flexion position. So it's a very common thing I see, and I want to talk about just this pattern of, well, first of all, talk about the pattern of patients that I see with this. So uh, a lot of people are desk bound, so they, they work most of their day in front of a desk, especially got worse with pandemic, of course. Um, a lot of guys will get this, especially uh, like weightlifters, a lot of guys that do a lot of bench pressing and maybe don't program enough back exercises in, or maybe they think they're doing a back day and a, ch- and a chest day, but if you look at the actual programming, it's a lot more chest. So it's like six sets of bench, three of incline, three of decline, flies, push-ups, and then back day might be three sets of rows and three sets of pull-ups. So th- there's an, a programming issue there. So what's going on? So first, let me talk just a little bit about the anatomy. Uh, Don't fall asleep on me. I'll make this as quick as possible. So uh, the bones, you've got your shoulder blade. It's got a spiny part. It comes up to form the acromion, which is kind of the most bony, prominent spot on the top of your shoulder. And that meets with your collarbone or your clavicle. And that is your acromioclavicular joint. Underneath that passes your rotator cuff, uh, this muscle called supraspinatus. That's the one that's usually kind of impinged. So that, that becomes relevant in a little bit here. So um, the symptoms are typically reaching overhead, pinching kind of on the front or side of the shoulder. Uh, there's a lot of things that cause it, but specifically I want to talk about an anterior tilted position of the shoulder blade. So if you got someone rounded forward uh, most of the day at work, they're going to tend to develop some rounding of the thoracic spine or the upper back, and that will get stiff. The shoulder blades will sort of uh, tip forward a little bit. Uh, And then some muscular imbalances occur, both from that position, because your body will adapt to any position you put it in for prolonged periods, and from maybe some training errors or programming errors. So... A little bit back to the anatomy, there is, um, so in the shoulder blade, there's a part of the bone that kind of protrudes forward and serves as an attachment to a muscle called your pec minor. So it's sort of the top part of your your chest muscle. Uh, And that function is to tilt the shoulder blade forward, uh, anterior tipping. And then on the back side of the shoulder blade, you've got the lower trap. Uh, Well, you've got a lot of muscles attached to it, but the one that's relevant to what I'm talking about is the lower trap. So it's on the bottom side of the shoulder blade, and that does the opposite of the pec minor. It tilts the shoulder blade backwards. So what happens is you get a lot of development of the pecs, a lot of stiffening of the pecs, and then the lower trap is classically weak in comparison to the pec minor. So you've created this situation now where the shoulder blade at rest is tipped forward. On top of that, the upper back is rounded forward, uh, and that's what creates... Uh, some pinching of the shoulder. Uh, the, the lower trap is just not really a muscle that's targeted much in the gym. There's not really any machines that target it. There are exercises you can do, but I, you know, it's not really. You, it's basically doing like laying your stomach and doing a Y with your arms. Uh, you don't really see that often in the gym. So classically undertrained muscle. So do this little experiment. Uh, round your upper back like you're the hunchback of Notre Dame, right? And then and keep that position, and then raise your arm like you're raising it in the classroom, just straight up. And you'll notice that you can only go so far. You probably can't get the arm to your ear. Then, and keep that position in your arm. Now sit up straight, and then see how much further you can go with your arm. What happened there? You basically improved your thoracic position. Your uh, shoulder blade naturally slid somewhat down, and that changes the position of the AC joint because the AC joint is part of the scapula, the shoulder blade. All right, so what is happening is your rotator cuff Uh, in that rounded position is running up against the underside of that AC joint because you've changed how soon it can reach sort of like that roof. When you sit up straight and you uh, bring your shoulder back a little bit or tip it posteriorly, I should say, it changes the location location of the AC joint and creates more room for the humerus and the rotator cuff to, to spiral upward. 
So what do we do about this? Uh, well, you know, with this specific example, and again, there's a lot of reasons that you can have pain with overhead movements, but with this specific case, you have to loosen the front, strengthen the back, and improve your thoracic spine. So let's we'll start with thoracic spine. Uh, something simple you can do is get a foam roller, uh, lay on it on your upper back, uh, keep your butt on the floor, bend your knees, and support your hands behind your neck, and then extend backwards over that foam roller. So you're laying on your back on the foam roller, and you're taking your head, and you're trying to drop it down towards the floor. Do that for you know, maybe five or ten reps, and then slide up to the next vertebrae, and hit all those upper vertebrae, not the neck or low back, but the upper vertebrae, anything that attaches to the ribs. Those are the ones that tend to get stiff. That's going to improve your thoracic extension. Then you want to do um, the lower trap strengthening. Well, actually, I would probably loosen up the pec first. So you can self-massage, or you can do massage guns, or you can do stretches for the pec. But one of my favorite things to do is a pec release. Pretty easy to do. You grab something firm like a lacrosse ball, and you find like a door frame, or you can do this on the floor against the wall too, uh, and you just put some pressure. You kind of lean into that ball on the pec minor. So just kind of comb through with your fingers through the upper pec muscle, find where it's tender. It tends to be pretty high, kind of close to the joint line of the shoulder. You'll find some tender spots in there. Put the pressure there with a the lacrosse ball while pushing up against something like a door frame. Hold that pressure and then start moving your arm up and down, side to side, find where it's stiff. Spend about a minute or two sort of mobilizing that tissue. And then you'd want to strengthen the lower trap. Okay, so that, probably the easiest thing to do is Google you know, lower trap strengthening. Uh, you'll see something like a prone Y exercise. That's sort of the classic one. There's a couple different ways to hit it, but the prone Y is probably the best one. So picture you're on your stomach on a physio ball, and you get your chin tucked, your head and, and upper back are in a good position, and you're just lifting your arms up like you're, you know, making the letter Y with your arms, keeping those elbows straight. Do it nice and slow and controlled, and picture your shoulder blade tipping back as your arm comes up. That's the best way to hit that lower trap. Do that and I would say maybe three, three to four times a week and also look at your programming. See if you are truly programming enough back exercises compared to your chest exercises and look at your posture at work. Are, are you hunched over all day? Are you creating a lot of stiffness? Our society is kind of set up to be in that position a lot. So we have to do what I call reverse posturing. So if you're hunched over most of the day, spend some time going the opposite way. Even in the desk, you can do that. So you could, uh, just like I described the thoracic extension of the foam roller, you could, if you have a back that's, um, sorry, a chair with like a rigid back, you could put your hands behind your neck and then just lean backwards over the backrest. Uh, even that would be enough of a stimulus to sort of counteract that flexion that you're in all day. So, there you go. Anterior tipping of the scapula, a very common cause of shoulder pain. I've been seeing a lot of it lately, more than usual. Maybe it's because of the pandemic and everybody in front of their cameras doing their Zoom calls. Um, so, if you know somebody who's got shoulder pain, when you're reaching overhead, send them this podcast. Maybe, uh, maybe it just solves their problem. Anyways, that's all for this week, a short one. Uh, this is Dynamic Naples. Email me, chris at dynamicnaples.com. Give me a call, 239-919-7139. I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Do you have unexplained pain? Or do you wonder just how healthy you are? When was the last time you had your blood tested? Blood chemistry analysis is a great way to stay ahead of any health conditions. And now you can have control of your health with Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked is an incredible company that sends blood tests to your home. You can choose from over 30 different tests, whether that's liver function, testosterone, micronutrient, cholesterol, or C-reactive protein, which is a marker for inflammation. It's sent to you with free shipping, and you get results in two to five days, no physician referral needed. Use the code DPT20 for 20% off. Go to letsgetcheck.com and use the code DPT20. Did you know that you can get started with physical therapy without a physician's referral? Physical therapists don't just solve pain, we get down to the root cause and keep it from coming back. We also discuss all things health, such as nutrition and lifestyle changes. If you feel that you could use some help, let's get on a free consult call. Go to www.dynamicnaples.com 
and sign up for a free call. Also, if you like this podcast, please give us a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. It helps us spread the message. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.